All right, we did some aquascaping in the 90 gallon African cichlid tank. On the left there, you see some of the plants that I got when I first unboxed them. Most of them are from Boost Plant, which is an online site that you can order from. And I got some from Amazon as well. And on the right side, you can kind of see the result there when I put these plants into the 90 gallon. So let's start from the unboxing phase here. I got a number of different types of Anubias, and I also got some Java ferns, which I think I'm going to become a big fan of. So you can see everything comes packaged very nicely, moist packages, shipping only took two days, so everything was in good shape. You can see some of the names right there, and I'm going to show that again later in case you decide you want any of these plants for your own projects. What I like to do, if you've seen my previous videos, is I like to remove the the wool and the and the plastic basket, rinse off the plant really good, and then I like to glue them to rocks and then put them into my tanks and then bury the rocks partially with the gravel. That's just the way I like to do it. I don't like to do the whole fertilization and the dirt layer and I just like I like my gravel to be able to move I want to be able to vacuum and get all the waste and garbage out of the bottom I don't want anything permanent like that so I've got to file down the glue here and and fix these rocks because I had a bit of a riot in my 135 gallon I'll show you that in a second we're looking at my two juvenile tanks there that have one plant in them a piece and then on the bottom there that's where I'm going to store some, some of the leftover plants. And here we look at my 90 gallon right now, which has got some plants, but it's pretty barren compared to how it's going to look in a few minutes in this video. Only artificial plants here in my 135. These guys are rough riders right here. And they didn't like their new feeding schedule when I changed it to every other day. And I think they, they rebelled and they had a riot and they destroyed all the natural plants in there. Here are two 29 gallon tanks that I'm gonna put my juveniles in because they need more space. But that's another video, let's stay on topic here. You can see this hollow rock, I also got that from Boost Plant in the past. And this Java Fern, it comes already attached to a rhizomat, it's called there. It's kind of like, hey, the roots are tightly packed in there. And so I patted it down with a, with a towel to dry it and I'm gonna glue it inside of that hollow rock. That way, see, it's already a tight fit, which makes the gluing even better because then you know it's not gonna move. And I'm gonna put that one somewhere near the middle, a little bit to the right. And here I've removed the wool from the those plants and rinsed them off real good. You definitely wanna clean them off. You might even wanna soak them for a while or if you saw that bottom tank I have right there, yeah, we're looking at it again here. I'm gonna leave some in there. And then when I have some more free time, I'll glue them all to rocks and then put them in my 90 gallon and maybe in my 65 gallon in the living room. Some people like to kind of quarantine the plants because you never know, there could be snail eggs on them and things like that. I've heard complaints about that. So here I've done the gluing now. I try to make the root fit into a rock formation that I made, one that's kind of like a natural fit. I test them out and see which one will be a tight fit. That way when you glue around it, it's gonna it's gonna have no trouble bonding. And then there's like a black placemat on the bottom that's also glued so I have drainage. You can see the Java fern there attached or installed into the, the hollow rock. Here's the name of some of the plants that I got from Boost Plant. And the Java fern on the rhizomat from, from Amazon. So I'm do, I'm, draining some water because it's hard to put that java fern under the gravel it kept wanting to float up and you just you need the water level lower so you can get your arms and hands in there and then put a step ladder in there so i can actually get down there and do the work much easier with just gluing to the rocks you just put it in there and then put some gravel on top or around it but one of the two java ferns I wanted to actually bury in the substrate. And because it's on that rhizomat, rhizomat, that makes it pretty easy. You can see this area is pretty much cleaned out. 
Those are some surface plants right there that I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with those yet. So now we're putting the water back in. Pretty convenient setup I have because the cleaning station's right there. It just makes it a lot easier for my tank maintenance, just having everything right there. So you can see the plants are all filled in there right now. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna probably put some more on the left side just to have it balanced. You can see already one of the plants fell apart. That That's the Ceratophyllum demersum. The common name is coontail. That's another reason why I like plants like Anubias because they're compact and solid and, and the leaves and branches don't dangle and just fall apart. And I have fans that work on timers, so I do get some pretty good water movement in all my tanks. So those plants that can kind of wither away and dangle, they don't work too well in my setups. But you see how solid those Anubias are? I've had those for a long time. They need to be cleaned off a little bit, the leaves, but in terms of the plant just surviving and holding together, they do really well in tanks that have a lot of motion. And which you should have in an African cichlid tank. So you can see the effect. It really looks beautiful. And another thing I like is the fish use the entire space more. They use the upper portions of the water column. And you can see all the action right now on the bottom. Everyone's investigating, kind of sniffing around, maybe nibbling on the plants, nibbling on different things that are growing on the leaves, and then because food will sometimes be trapped and stuck in there, they're always going to be investigating and kind of gives them more to do. You know, if you have just an empty tank, the fish, I think, I believe, will, will get bored because there's nothing to do. But now with all the plants, there's, there's reasons to sift through and swim around the leaves and branches. And then there's more places to kind of hang out and hide for the smaller fish. And obviously they're doing it. They're doing some natural filtration, oxygenating the water and removing some, some impurities in the water, nitrates and whatnot. And then they're also using the fish waste as fertilizer. So you're kind of getting a symbiotic relationship there between the plants and the fish. And if the, if the fish want to swim freely, they can kind of use the middle and top of the tank, whereas before everyone was kind of hanging out at the bottom. So now... There's kind of different regions for them to explore and you kind of want your fish to use your whole tank, the, all, the, all the real estate that you have instead of all be on the bottom. So now I think that we're going to get the fish to kind of use the space and spread out more. And you can see, just look how excited they seem. You know, this is just instantly, right after I put the plants in there, everyone's kind of checking out everything and it's just... There's more to do, more action, more activity. And of course, you've got the, the beauty of the natural plants and then the benefits. It's probably good for their health and your water quality. But I, I do believe I'm going to stick to the gluing of the rocks. I'm not going to get into the, you know, putting a CO2 tank and things like that either or the, the dirt substrate. I want to be able to vacuum and move things around so... In my opinion, at least for, for my interest, what I like to do, I'm going to keep this system where I glue to rocks and then that way you can always take one in, take one out, move the move any of those rocks with the plants and put them someplace else. You don't have to worry about the roots moving when you, when you vacuum or the, or the fish themselves moving gravel around and you're just going to have constant, you know, a constant mess and constantly having to rearrange things, rebury things. So... Let me know what you guys think of this setup and and I'd love to hear your thoughts and expertise on aquascaping because uh, I'm an, I'm, I wouldn't consider myself an expert. This is just the way I like to do it and I'm kind of learning more about it. So give me some comments below or, 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 or maybe share your experiences or, or tell me what, what plants you think would look good in here. I'd love to hear from you. So thanks for watching as always. Like and subscribe. And we will see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.